Hello everyone, welcome back. It's a pretty impressive building, isn't it? I'm here in London at the British Museum because I feel like I need a little bit of culture. Two million years worth of culture to be exact. And I'm gonna take a look inside and see some pretty amazing stuff. It'll be highlights because it's gonna take me a very long time to walk around there and we don't have two hours. But what I will do is show you some of the best bits of the British Museum here in London. Come on. we walk up to the uh, entrance. Look at that. Question is, where do we go first? Just look at the ceiling. Absolutely amazing. I think we'll walk first into the uh, the Grand Auditorium, which is pretty special. Check this out. That is amazing on the eyes. So when you come in, it's advisable to get a booklet because otherwise you might get a little bit lost. And you might have no idea where to go. Look at that. That is incredible. It's amazing when you see that there's buildings within a building. It's crazy. We have a calf here. <laughs> so we're looking at history now from 6,000 to 1500 BC. And it is crazy some of the stuff you can see in here. From old pots. Skeletons there. This is the Jericho tomb, and it's hard to believe that it was uh, shifted from the Middle East here to London and preserved perfectly. We're now in Roman Britain. Wow, look at these. They definitely have been polished. It's absolutely fascinating to think how much history is in this building. We're now heading into one of my favorite parts of the museum, Victorian England from 1400 to 1800. The crazy thing is, is my nan used to have stuff like this on her mantelpiece. I feel like I'm actually in my nan's living room right now. Look at that little elephant. There's also some humongous plates. Look at these. It's a good job these are all in cages because can you imagine accidentally knocking some of these over? It makes you think how much are these worth? Wow, look at that. A real Sumatran sword. That is impressive. Look at the jewellery. It's amazing to see some of the stuff you learnt at school and to see it for real. This is the Sutton Who helmet from Anglo-Saxon England. Look at that. And some of the swords as well. 
amazing how this stuff has been found and still intact. I mean, you can just imagine unearthing that. I mean, that's pretty big. Look at this, amazing, like a cauldron. Obviously what they would, uh, I'm sure, cook something in. An instrument there. So all this stuff was discovered in Suffolk. Amazing. If you're a big fan of timepieces, this is the room for you. Some of these really old, antique grandfather clocks. I think my dad used to have something similar to that in his living room. And I'm sure I had one of those. <laughs> In fact, I used to work at a radio station and uh, I, I remember that. That was the first proper radio controlled time clock. And then you go and see some of the old stuff as well. Look at this. The astronomical clock dating back to 1778. So perfect for astronomy and also telling the time. Look at some of these watches. Going back to the 1700s, when uh, having a watch was a symbol of wealth. And it goes up from the mid 1700s all the way up towards the 1950s and now. Look at that. This is called the rolling ball clock. How interesting. That's one way of telling minutes and hours. There's something so satisfying just watching that. Look at it. So the steel ball takes 30 seconds to roll from one end of the table to the other. And at the end of the catch, it's released, enabling the mechanism to tip the table the other way so the ball rolls back. The ball travels apparently 2,500 miles a year. Mental. Look at that, a clock dating back to 1650. They definitely were masters of their art at the time. Last clock we'll check out, 1589 this clock is. Look at that. There's certain bell ringers there that chime on the hour, half an hour. So we're now walking into one of my favorite parts of the museum, the money part. And history of money is quite fascinating. So it's definitely worth coming in here and having a look. Look at those gold coins, they are so thin. And just look how they used to make coins back in the day with a machine like this. Pretty random to see a 50 pound note there. Obviously that is real. But you can see some really old notes here. Look at that, absolutely amazing, five pounds. Look how big they used to be. That's one thing I remember my dad um, with five pound notes. They used to be absolutely massive. Again, it is advisable to get one of these audio tours as you go around the British Museum because then there's certain areas where you can plug your little audio device in and find out a lot more detail. I'm going to go down those stairs in just a moment. But first we'll take a look into one of my favourite parts of the museum, the Egyptian history and the tomb chapel which is just in front of us. Now Tutankhamun's head mask and death mask is no longer here, which is a shame. But this room is pretty amazing. How they used to mummify absolutely everything. That's a bull. See a scarab beetle there, look at that. And some of the old coffins. And we'll even see a mummy in a moment as well. Hard to believe you're looking at something that's over 4,000 years old and they all tell a story. It's quite dark in here, I don't know if you can see some of this, but this is some of the jewelry that ancient Egyptians used to wear. I mean, it's absolutely amazing that they managed to find this stuff. Look at these little jars here. 
And what's fascinating is there's mummies of all different sizes. Look at that. It's kind of eerie just walking around all these tombs. But extremely fascinating as well. That is crazy. It's a shame that it's actually so dark in here because um, it's a struggle to see. But I guess the harsh lights could damage some of these uh, some of these mummies. But look at this, little models that were made, that were found in some of these tombs. So if you've always wanted to come into the British Museum, it is free, but you can actually pay for membership. And if you do, there are special members' rooms. Now, I'm not a member, uh, but I believe in there you can get a little bit more um, in-depth history. You can get some uh, personal guides as well. But um, yeah, entry to the British Museum is completely free. Obviously with the uh, dreaded C word and everything, you might actually have to book a slot. But you can do that online and it's free. Now I've been to the museum in Egypt and uh, what's quite frustrating is when you're there, some of the most important tombs um, and bits of history are actually here in the British Museum in London so if you've been to one you definitely need to come to the other it's amazing to think the journeys that these have been on look at that now it didn't say obviously you're not allowed to touch it which is a shame but it's amazing to see something that is so old. Look at the detailing on the face. So that's of the King Ramesses II. And it's hard to believe when you're seeing it here in the British Museum that it was actually in Egypt. Wow, look at the size of this. Even the detailing, just literally all inside. And bearing in mind, they had very primitive tools back then. And this was all carved by hand. And all these bits of writing done by hand too. Amazing. And that is a huge scarab beetle. If you've seen the movie The Mummy, you'll know what they are. Apparently this is one of the only ones to survive of its kind. You think of the thousands of years worth of history in the British Museum. The thing is, there's no real right way to go around. It's kind of just explore as you go. Now this room is temperature controlled to protect all of these. This is so funny because I, I thought I was still walking around the museum, then I realized, no, I'm actually in the gift shop. But I tell you what, if you want a little piece of history, you can buy the Head of Life, which is a, an African sculpture. It's worth 1,600 pounds. It's a bit of a bargain, really. Some very interesting stuff. For example, you could pick yourself up a little mini Sutton Who helmet for 525 pounds, or maybe, a beaded skull. I'm sure this is not the gift shop anymore. Wow, what a room. It does remind me a little bit of Harry Potter. Don't you agree? Especially with this in the middle here. Wow, look at that. That's impressive. You can see parts of the solar system there. Saturn around the edge, Jupiter, and then Mars. The revolution of science. This is what you call an amazing staircase in the British Museum. 
If you like the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and click that notification bell. And also check this video out of the Natural History Museum in London. I'll see you next time.